All right, Kim, I think I have it. Um, All right. Hold on. Let me just. Just looking for it. And I just want to add in a note, um, there are no meetings for this week. I was going to send them out yesterday, but my kids camp got closed because oh. of COVID case. Oh, no. Yeah, so I got okay. sent, well, I had to get them yesterday out of camp and bring them to get them tested. So I was a little out of sorts. So oh, there are no fine. minutes this week. We can, we can do that next time. That's, That's okay, Amber. Yes. We understand. Uh, sorry that happened. Yes. And we got an email this morning that there was a case at my daughter's dance studio. So yay, Hampton County. <laughs> oh, hey, it's coming here too. Yeah. I know. <clears throat> so, but UMass has free testing, community testing. It's all free, really fast. Yes. Quick and easy. Yeah, but UMass doesn't do kids. They do um, anybody over, I think, age oh, two wow. or four or something. They've oh, they dropped do it. now? Yeah, they've dropped mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Oh, good. Because you used to have to travel up to Greenfield. And what's crazy, I mean, even as these numbers, I mean, I go in almost every week just because I'm on the campus, but like almost nobody's been coming in. Like it's been down to like the stations have like cut down, down, down <laughs> like, yeah. to like almost like one person there. And now, uh, I think we it will went, go up again. But. Yeah, we went to the Holyoke Community College one yesterday, and there was one car in front of us, and I drove up, and there was nobody there. But by the time I was done, there were five cars behind me. Oh. I so, went Amber, East, I think yeah. we're recorded, right? Yes, yes. we are whenever you are ready. Okay, well, we can start, I guess, because we're recorded. <laughs> Just as we're bantering, our banter is recorded. You have... Um, Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, I was just, uh, I thought I had it, but I don't see it right now. Well, let's just say that pursuant to the governor's right. orders. Pursuant to the governor's we, orders. We've all, we've all checked in and we can all hear each other and this is being recorded, so. Yes. And it, it, so it so is available <laughs> on Amherst.gov website. So, yes. yeah, that'll, that'll do. So I don't see any, um, there are, we are all here and we have no um, public at the moment. So. Yeah. Okay. So we can start our meeting. Um, uh, first, are there any announcements? Um, I had a couple announcements. Uh, I'm just, so one was that um, I know that TSO, you know, is asked for our feedback on the North Pleasant Street project. I mean, the North Pleasant Street project at Kendrick Park, but then they will, though they haven't asked yet, they would like our tax feedback on the North Pleasant Street project that's running through campus. Um, the pedestrian stuff that we've reviewed the maps for before, like in an earlier version of it. Um, and I believe that Guilford is presenting to the TSO on what, September 30th, Guilford, is that right? On that? Ish. Can't hear you, Guilford. <laughs> um, and then, and then it will come to TSO. I mean, it would come to TAC after that. Um, but the, I guess the question is, and so they said, the TSO said that they would like our feedback on that project by like mid October, and in the idea of having a public hearing or a public forum on that project. So I just wanted to kind of give people the heads up that they're also going to ask us for that and they're going to want a quicker turnaround than they're asking for for this project. Which, so that's the um, campus to the- North Amherst. Pine Street. Right, yeah. Like Eastman okay. Lane to- Okay. Right, which I feel like we've already kind of- We have, on that. and I mean, and I was reviewing uh, Guilford's looking over the memo that uh, the town manager and Guilford had sent to the council and there's not that many details about exactly what the plans are. So I don't feel like that would be a hard one to respond to. It seems like that project is in somewhat of a, like an early stage. That was my take. No, it's not, okay. But it doesn't have funding yeah. yet, I guess, so. But your memo was just pretty short. So your memo to the council was short. That was my take. 
Can you hear me now? Yes. yes we got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, I have a problem between Teams and Zoom. They don't like each other. Yes. I don't like Teams. but Oh, Teams is the best. Okay. It is, but it messes <laughs> up my Zoom. <laughs> I have to use both too, but my problem. Yeah, anyway. Uh, Tracy, is there any way that you could send out that memo to us too, please? Um, yeah, it was in the packet. I'll, I'll distribute it to everyone. Um, but again, so one of the things is that the TSO hasn't instructed us on what they want us to look at. Yeah, yeah. It was no, more I'm just, just of a, like it, a heads but, up. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to see. Um, and that was one, actually, I was wondering, hmm. we can talk about it. I mean, maybe that would be a good one to do like a site visit and like walk along that stretch of North Pleasant just to yeah. get a sense of the project because it is covering a longer distance. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I feel like we've done that. We've we've gone over this project. Eve, Eve and I did that. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. You on with that, Tracy? I wasn't on the tack then. Oh, okay. Yeah, we did that, and I, I think it would be worth doing again because that is a major route. And if we if we mm -hmm. have the plans with us, we could then see exactly where everything's going. And mm -hmm. I, think that, I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah, me too. So you should probably schedule a site visit and then schedule yeah. it and. That I has mean, to be posted too, I believe. Is that right, Guilford? Because members of the public might want to join us for that. It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, yeah. so my sort of take on it is that we could explore the project again or do a site visit before it comes to us formally from TSO because they've said it's coming. And that just so that we're not like a super tight time frame. Because I think How otherwise about? they wanted us to turn it around like within like one meeting or something. So. Yeah. Would it be Which possible is, to schedule an extra meeting to do that? Possibly. I guess it depends. I guess it depends how busy we are. September mm -hmm. gets a little tricky because there's also the holidays. Mm -hmm. Like there's a Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, stuff. Right. Start of school, everything gets a little crazy. Okay. <laughs> what do you have? College kids, grown ups? <laughs> <So. laughs> I'm going to be doing a lot more driving. That's all I got to say. Okay. It seems as if we are going to have to um, go through our calendar a bit then, because that's another agenda item, um, because we need to kind of schedule our um, the agenda item six is scheduling our um, September. So that's good yeah, to keep absolutely. in mind. Yeah, I put that on the agenda with that in mind. Um, a couple yeah. other announcements is I've been in touch with that Safe Routes to School coordinator who presented at our meeting, and she has reached out to the Amherst schools. And she's supposed to be presenting at a meeting, one of those meetings they have at the central office with all the principals and big wig administrators. Right. And so that's good. And she said she would follow up with us later. Um, and she also thought that it would be really important to have like some parents or other people like at each school, if they do want to expand, who really want to kind of lead it, right? Because I doubt very much that the principal will be leading the efforts just because they're so busy. Um, and I also saw in the news, we've talked about it before, but that whole like transit connection, like with Worcester, it seems that that's like up and going to be up and running soon. And uh, I can send around, I have, a, I have the article right here. I can send around like an email about it if people are interested. But it says it's all set to roll in August. It will get you from Amherst to Worcester and it only takes... Uh, it only takes almost two hours or an hour and 45 minutes or something, but hmm. it can be done. Hmm. So. Great. Are that the end of your announcement? Yeah, I think that, that was it. Yeah. Great. Um, and there are no public comments at this point because there is no public, um, nor are we approving our minutes. So we're on to agenda item five, which is looking at... Um, the um, Kendrick Park project, um, North Pleasant, McClellan, Triangle Street, that area, and um, looking at those changes. And more importantly, I mean, all, equally importantly, um, looking at the TSO's request for um, the work that they would like for us to um, report on. So um, should one of us bring up that, that memo? I printed a copy. I don't know if you want me to read um, it. There yes, seems no, I mean, 
There seems to be two. There seems to be two copies of that memo. They're different. There's a first one and there's an updated one, right? I have one that's from July 21st. Is there one after that? Um, I can't hear you, Tracy. Oh, Tracy, just, you're muted. Yeah, no, I know. I'm sorry. I oh. was just closing windows. Um, uh, I the they're basically the same. I think that the one I circulated to before our last meeting, the last week's meeting, was just it just had at the top like TSO or something, yeah. just to like make it clear it came from the TSO, and I didn't change any other text. Okay. And I what? saw the so version. The so there was a version that Darcy had circulated. Um, Kim yes. to you, and then it was shared with everyone. That's the version that was also went. TSO also sent it to the DAC and to oh, the okay. street tree people and everything. The public. Well, I was going to suggest okay. it, uh, since I have a printed copy, if you want me to read the questions while we look at the diagram, that maybe that would be helpful. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I I now I have that one. I thought there was an earlier one. I have it here. So. Um, Maybe Can we just, if, oh, I'm sorry, Kim, could we just show that um, memo quickly so that anybody mm -hmm. who's going to be watching this can, you know, pause sure. the video at that point, and then we can do That's exactly true. what um, All right. you have it. Bruce was talking about. Yeah, I guess actually that's a good question, you know, for Amber Guilford is, do we have to, when we're share, when we're discussing materials at a meeting, do they have to be also available to the public? Um, well, we don't, we'll we don't put, really do packets, you know, the way the council committees do. So I don't the, know. the minutes need to reference the documents that were used or shared okay. or mentioned at the meeting. All right. So that if someone wants to then <clears throat> retrieve them, they know what, what they're looking for. And they can make a request of either the oh, committee or the town clerk as keeper okay. of the record. Thank okay. you for that clarification. So here is, you guys all can see the document now? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So um, the, I guess to me, the most prescient point is the, um, the whether or not we, we feel as if um, the one, the one way, we should imp have a one way street there. And um, I think at the last meeting, who was not at the last meeting? Well, we, right. we, so it was an informal gathering that wasn't right. actually I, I, the I, committee. I was, not, you know, I was not present for that because I was away. No. And, okay. and, and Bernie, Bernie had missed it too. And, and it Bernie is, the meeting is available online. Like it's, the recording well, is online, but. I guess the, um, in the end, I, I'll just summarize and someone can correct me if they think this is inaccurate, but I feel like the, the, um, and if you want right now, I can stop the sharing and stop start sharing on the um, on the other uh, the the schematic here. Yes, that would be helpful. Um, yep. So I don't know which part is the best one, and I don't know if even this is the best document to see. Okay, so. Sorry, I think I don't have the right one. Do you want to share that, Guilford? Well, actually, if you want to leave this one up and zoom in a little bit. Yeah, okay. Th this is what the Cecil group proposed for the, the Kendrick Park. This is their overall concept for the park. Um, so um, this yeah. is actually, the left is to the north uh -huh. and right is to the south. So sort of a big, a big green about, area. Right? A big green area in the north. A playground is this next piece going to south. That's a playground. Next is a, a oval meeting area, which could double as a ice rink or a performance thing. And then you have um, sort of a farmer's market um, meeting area, sales area to the very south tip. That was their overall concept. And then you see on North Pleasant Street, they have parking all along the street. They have angle in parking, they have parallel parking, angle in par parking again and parallel. And that was just parking for the park. Um, that's kind of how they set it up for people who are going to the park. 
and I guess at, at the last meeting we were debating um, the utility of, of, of both this sidewalk here and the, um, the, the and angled in parking here. I think what we all kind of decided was that the angled in parking here, at least part of that should be as there is no handicap accessible parking on this park. We thought that actually is a pretty um, strong idea, at least having some of that here. I think that we all came to agreement on that. Perhaps the other yeah. spots could remain as angled in parking. <coughs> and the other piece of the discussion included the fact yeah. that currently the um, uh, uh, tractor trailers and other other um, people who don't want to go through this um, roundabout here do cut through this area. And if you know people are going to be parking and having their small children go to this park, that perhaps we should try and kind of cut down at, at the number of, of distraction points at this particular end of the park. So currently, there, there will be an intersection of uh, crosswalks from McClellan, which leads from the neighborhoods back here. This is going to happen, correct, Guilford? Yeah, do you want me to show the other plan that shows the sure. proposed work? Yeah, sure. I will stop sharing. I know this is like, this is like that makes you wait for someone. You gotta share and you know, take your turn. <laughs> this is kind of like fun sometimes. Uh, Thank you for sharing, Guilford. And I think I think most of us kind of came to the the um, the thought, at least, to, that maybe putting a one way one way at least from McClellan to um, the other end of North Pleasant would be a a, a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Can everybody. I can you see my the I shared yes. this time? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is flipped. So your left side yeah. of your screen is south, and the right side's north. But so this let's, um let's, this this area here is already approved, and we're going to raise the intersection and put crosswalks here. So this is already approved for us to do this work. And I'm then, sorry. Which one is approved, Guilford? My McClellan. cursor, McClellan, and North. It's moving right here. Oh, okay. okay. What, may I ask a question? Uh, yes. Okay, so if, if you enter from East Pleasant Street, uh, you can park at that first section of the park and still go back to East Pleasant Street. But if you park farther down on North Pleasant Street, you do have to exit because it'll be one way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that would be the idea. And and, and I, I did some inform, so full disclosure, right? I live in the McClellan Street neighborhood back there. And um, I was talking with a bunch of people who, you know, do things like walk their dogs along the street, also have children and, you know, and we, many, many, many of us, and this is something that I shared at the last meeting, feel like the route um, that's currently under debate about being one way, actually when students are here, and they're parking on the um, whatever east side, west side of the street, which is where the green area is right now. There's currently right now there is um, permit parking on that side of the street, which right now there's nobody parking there. But when students get back, a lot of students park there. And then there are all the um, all of the houses that you see on that side of um, the park are um, big apartment buildings and. Um, with lots of parking in the back, so plenty of parking for those people in those in those um, buildings, and the students really um, rush out onto the street as it is now, um, and it it does because there are people parked where those green spots are, and then students are also coming from those buildings in the back, the parking lot in the back of the buildings onto the street. It makes it very very um, challenging to walk through there or bike through there like I do. So that's well, that, pretty that raises a question with yep. the parking and maybe this is beyond our purview, but how will the parking be managed so students don't park there all day to walk to UMass uh, so that people can actually use the park? Well, they can't park there right now. 
I mean, so currently, right, a lot of the street is permit parking. Um, and so you'd have to have a downtown permit parking, downtown center permit in order to park there. And so it is possible that some students who live downtown are like just parking near there because it's like the closest. It's, you know, it's not that far from the UMass campus, particularly like some of the departments. Um, but I mean, and none of the parking, like, if, if there were parking meters added, right, none of them would be like for a long duration. Right. So they wouldn't be able to right. park there. Um, I do, yeah. I mean, on the parking, in terms of the parking management, I feel a little bit just based on the fact that Sean Mangano is studying the parking now. And it seems when I looked into like the history of the permit parking program and the current regs, like I don't think they've been updated since 2005, which even includes just the list of where permit parking exists. And obviously the town has changed a lot in the last 16 years, so it should all be revisited. I think, you know, what we could do as a TAC is we could just sort of make our suggestions about it and just, you know, as, as Sean Mangano and whoever else is like studying this, like these are things we want them to consider or something and maybe like have, and if we're gonna make recommendations to have softer recommendations on that piece of it. Um, yeah. But, I, but Kim, I, I, I thought you brought up really good points about just the safety with all of those access driveways, you know, to the yeah. back and that all the parking and, and I had mentioned last week that one of my big concerns, um, if parking is added on both sides of the street or, or even with those driveways is just that when, when the park is busy and, um, and Chris Bressop had talked about how, right, the vision, her vision of what Kendrick Park will be or the town's current vision is like different when they originally were looking at redoing Kendrick Park. So back, you know, in the 2008, 2009 study that led up to the drawings from the Cecil group. I mean, some of the thinking then was that we want some, we want people to come to the park, but we don't want it to be a huge attractor, um, like maybe, you know, 50 cars a day, like 50 yeah, 50 cars a day or kind of thing. But what Chris was talking about as well, that the playground is only the beginning and that then we can have like all different kinds of activities, like a lot of activities at Kendrick Park, you know, similar to stuff that happens on the common. I got that impression. Um, and so if there really is like that much demand, just like when there are events on the common, um, it could get kind of crazy with the parking there. Um, and I worry, I mean, one of my big concerns is just, I worry about if there are kids at the park and, you know, and they're playing, they're on the playground, but then they're also, you know, throwing balls and Frisbees and stuff. And if people run into the street, like if kids run into the street, even on that little street, but if the sight lines are really poor um, and particularly, I just think about like, particularly on that side with the driveways too, you know, if you, you know, if you park a bunch of like minivans and SUVs and things, like the sight lines are terrible. Like Kim, you had mentioned when you've biked there, right? There's delivery trucks and yes. other trucks. And I mean, you can't see now and we don't have all these little kids too. <laughs> you know, like if there was a big event. Um, so one thing I was, one thing I was sort of wondering about that. And I also think it would address the concerns that I had about if we had parallel parking right next to the park, because I do think, you know, that, that, I mean, it's really hard, like when kids are, you know, when kids are injured or hit by cars, that most of it happens, like as pedestrians or bikes, it's mainly because the drivers don't see them, right, like back over crashes, like all kinds of things like that. So that's a really common way that kids get hurt. And if you have parallel parking on the park side, you know, it's, I can envision kids like running in between the cars, you know, chasing the ball or whatever. Um, and so looking at ways to minimize that. So when we talked about last week, one of my ideas was that instead of having the sidewalk run all the way the length of North Pleasant Street adjacent to the park on that side um, is maybe just having paths instead, like that would direct people to mainly stay on the paths, like the paths to the crossings, the paths to the main points of interest and things like that. Because if you run the sidewalk all the way along, I can see more kids walking along that and more kids sort of darting into the road. Um, but mm -hmm. one thing I was wondering is that, so there's the design that has some angled parking. And so, I mean, this is something we didn't 
you know, no, we haven't talked about it as a group at all. And even at last week, but one idea was what if there was like angled parking all along the park side and the on street parking was removed from the west side of North Pleasant Street where there's all those driveways. I concur with that. Yeah. Um, I think and that, that and that would provide, I mean, with the angled parking, it provides more of a buffer, you know, with kids at the park, like their kids aren't going to run in between cars in the same way. Um, and it eliminates the conflicts with all the driveways. I don't think we can apartments. say that they're not going to run in between angled parking in the same way as they if oh. all go somewhere, they're going to go. And that I mean, it doesn't other, matter whether they're yeah. parallel or angled. No, I mean, but I think it sort of matters. Like it, it's harder to run anyway. <laughs> um, I think if we put a a path along, as uh, Guildford was suggesting, and actually Chris was suggesting, putting it into the you know into the road, so right. effectively putting it where we're seeing the parallel parking spots right now, that path acts as a buffer, right? That's an obvious change in landscape to act as a you know you shall not go any further than this sort of thing to kids i mean it's hard to for kids to understand i can't go anywhere when some when there is you know no change between the road and the, mm -hmm. the landscape right now i have a footpath and there is an obvious change in the you know in what's going on and it just acts as that little extra oh hang on because i mean we've got to have an issue all the way around this park, right? I mean, yes, the North Pleasant Street is not very great, but what about Triangle Street? You know, we have cars moving at a much far greater speed along Triangle Street. Sure. It doesn't matter about sight lines at that point in time. You know, we, if anything, we've got a balance about how we're trying to fix one part with what we're doing against another part. You know, mm -hmm. we need to have a more holistic vision of what's going on here. I think, I think it would be very useful to address your points because there are natural kind of like playways and even like, you know, currently lots of people play there. I do too. Mm -hmm. And that open space where the park is, where the new playground is, what's really nice is all the playground is on the, um, the East Pleasant side. There's a big hill with nothing quite inviting <laughs> on the North Pleasant side of that park way. And um, so I think it would behoove us all to really take a look at that before we get too far in the weeds with um, mm -hmm. we think things should be. But I think we can all agree on one point, which is that making North Pleasant one way is probably a good idea. I yeah. would agree and with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think. Um, that's well, I, common, yeah, common. I mean, I support that as long as we explicitly say that we want to make sure that there's traffic calming measures. You know, yeah. and, for yeah. example, and I mean, so Guilford has. Yeah, Guilford has all bike lanes. lanes. Bike and lanes. Eve was talking about bike lanes, but I mean, Guilford was talking about the improvements. You know, the pedestrian improvements at McClellan Street, and then Guilford and you had mentioned that there could also potentially be like another crossing further north on North Pleasant Street. Can I mean, we put I think, multiples in? I mean, if we're going to yeah. have that path bump out, right? Right. Then that immediately creates this opportunity to have those calming crosswalks and channels people. Definitely. On yeah. and, and I think the more of those you have too, like if there was still, you know, truck traffic or anybody, I mean, I do worry about time in terms of, because the road, like if there's only one way traffic so basically one lane and there are times of day um, and times of year such as when the students aren't around or you know in the middle of winter or something where there aren't going to be that many people necessarily parking at that parking I mean I walk in that area I don't live as close as Kim but I still walk in that area quite a bit and a lot of times there's almost nobody at any of that parking Right. Even the metered parking. And so I do worry about, you know, those times of day and those times of years where the fact that now we have only the one lane of traffic going north and then no counter traffic, that that could encourage some people to speed. So if we do have the, um, the crosswalk, the improved crosswalk and safety traffic calming at McClellan Street, and then we also had something north, then that would 
really deter that people from doing that. Uh, is, are those, so. Do you mean raised crosswalks? <clears throat> Ones with the raised crosswalks, but also they have the bump out like island effects on each end, right? So they, right. they're not just straight across, they would um, channel traffic or look. Well, Make well, so, it look like the, the yeah. Road. I mean, so Guilford, um, the McClellan, it does include raised crosswalks, right? So then, I mean, if you have raised crosswalks there, even at times of day and times of year when there aren't as many people parked on the street, that just having the raised crosswalk there will slow people down. Yeah, I don't. I really don't think traffic is an <laughs> issue, even when when there's no parking on that street. It's uh, the driving is not an issue when there when no no students are around. I mean, but you had said that vehicles sometimes go really fast. No, I I I just feel like it gets really busy when there is all when students are there and there's parking on the one oh, side, okay. trucks and traffic going in both. And now there are is the P you know the 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 the. Guilford's people are all over there on the other side of the street. Oh boy, right? not those people. <laughs> all the DPW people are parking on the, yeah, oh. which is fine. The, the playground people, be. right? The playground yeah. people, yeah. No, there's all kinds of mess over there, you know, but that, that's not even so bad because there's no parking on that street. It's really the sight lines, like, right, you know, that right. we're talking about that are really dangerous. There. Well, so, I mean, that was why, um, I suggested maybe looking at, I mean, the reason, I mean, one reason I had suggested the angled parking on the other side of the street is because angled parking yeah. would allow you to use more, create more spaces, because that's one of the things, you know, right. that was one of the things that was trying to be done with changing it to one way, but it would also eliminate those potential conflicts. So, I mean, there was also, so if we put in the angled parking, we put in the, the, um, or we don't, we don't put it in. If we suggest, if we start from the park west, we suggest that they move, you know, that they have a footpath all the way along because it's got to be there just because of the topography. We then suggest the angled parking because you can get more cars in that way anyway. Yes. We suggest the raised crosswalks, which would reduce some spots, but whatever. I mean, that's more for the sight lines and to slow traffic down. Then... We'd also talked about removing the, the green strip on the far side. Well, that's in the town. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yes. Sorry, we'd, yeah. that had been discussed. And I think that that kind of goes hand in hand with the use of the angle parking. Because I don't think you could fit the angle parking and right. even a one-way street with some form of thing. And then right. if we do that, if we do the angle parking on one side, the, the street, remove the green strip that actually allows us for a much safer um, bike yeah. lane, right? Because right. then there's then they're not competing with any traffic. It's a very yeah. um, and good thing, and it'll also remove the bikes from the footpath on that side. I mean, because right. and, yeah, and you can also see like one of my issues and other people's issues are you know the cars coming out. If if we remo remove the parking on the where near the um, green strip currently. Then yeah. you can see the cars. Right. Everyone can see the coming mm -hmm. off of from the driveways that are mm -hmm. currently there. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Sorry, I mean, I've so, got to get rid of this sunshine that's behind my head. Wow, <laughs> it's and so it's dark getting really with the, uh, nasty. So the, yeah. the um, storms just so coming. I guess. Um, I mean, I get. I mean, can we? I guess we could talk about the different points, and you know, as we go, as we send our recommendations back to the TSO. I mean, I might suggest that we vote on different elements unless we all agree on all of the elements, but just to sort of break it down like point by point, right? So if I look at this decision document, it says, should North Pleasant Street be one way from McClellan to Triangle? Well, it says to allow for more parking, but I mean, let's just, I think that we were talking about it for other reasons too, intrude in um, potential traffic calming. And so that's something we all agree on then you know we can note that when we write it up for TSO. Yeah. Um, and maybe and maybe even like occasionally take some votes. Like I would like to, you know, if we wanted, I would like to just have a um, our recommendation or our vote actually be like in terms of that we support it going to one way street, like if the traffic calming is added and so on. 
both at McClellan Street and then and if that other additional crosswalk is pursued. So okay. do we, do we all agree with that? Yeah. Yes. Would, should we, and, and I think another thing that we pretty unanimous, unanimously agreed on, at least in the last meeting we were discussing this, was um, having um, the, the, on the two-way street, having some um, accessible, handicap accessible parking, mm -hmm. um, right. the, the front end parking there. Yeah, sorry, Gilbert, yeah. yeah. So if, if you do, if you do do, um angle in parking for handicapped accessibility in the section between McClellan and Halleck. Um, it, you have the two choices, either go into the park with the parking or you get rid of the green strip on the other side so you don't cut into the park. So that's something to right. think about. Okay. When you, okay. So and, when you, not... and when you talk about angle in parking, you might as well think about, do you want it angle in or back in? True. Um, well, I mean, or we could even you, just, explain, I mean, maybe we could, could even go ahead, Kim. I'm sorry. Could someone explain, could you explain what the, like the nuances between those really? I, I mean, I don't, I mean, I understand what it means for a car, but I, like, what are, what are, so why do people use one over the other? I mean, I can explain some of the thinking about it. And actually, um, so they're concerned sometimes with angled in parking that, people then are like backing out and they don't have like clear sight lines when they're backing out mm -hmm. into traffic. Um, and so studies have shown that back in parking is safer in terms of like the number of accidents and so on. Um, but, but I think that back in parking also has its own, back in angled parking also has its own issues and that, so some people say that back in angled parking is better because then when you're exiting the angled parking, you're exiting forward and not backward. You're not backing out into flowing traffic. Um, and then also, you know, if you're using the trunk of your car and so, so on, it's all like on the non-street side, you know, in terms of access. Yeah. Um, the issues I have with back in parking is that people most drivers do not drive back up that much like most drivers spend less than five percent of their time backing up um some vehicles newer vehicles i think it's like 2018 or 2019 and newer have backup cameras but there's a lot of cars that don't have those and some people that do have them don't really know how to use them so much um and i just i think that I mean, when I've observed the downtown back in parking that's like um, in right. front of Judy's right now, I mean, there are a few people who like back in like beautifully, but there's also a lot of people who like angle around it back and forth. I feel like the front end angled parking is just much more familiar to people. Um, I think it would also be safer with a with a playground, right? So but, you're driving in and you're right, able that's, to see more yeah. clearly if there are any kids there. Uh, Sorry. Um, so I think well, I Gilford think had I, his hand up. Sorry. I think I was discussing the point that I was trying. I was trying to come to some unanim some unanimous <laughs> decision about um, about the handicap accessible spots only. That's all I was. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. At this point, and so because I think that was something that we all agreed needed to be, should uh -huh. be part of this park, and so. I wonder if we should ask the access people who have accessibility, right. um, yeah. who are who who need that kind of parking, what they what what the pros and cons are. But uh -huh. before that, Guilford had a question. No, Go just ahead. a comment that someone pointed out to me, which I didn't think too much of because I don't have little ones anymore. But when you angle in parking and you pull in and you open the doors. The doors block egress to the sidewalk. They only allow egress backwards oh. towards the road. Oh, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. And the, the yeah. person was like, well, yeah, you know, you, you back in angle parking. When you open the doors, the kids hey. are blocked from going towards the road. They have to go towards the sidewalk, which I. That's, yeah, that's a really good point. That's true. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're, oh. you're, getting, you're getting three kids out of the car 
Like, oh, you sure. can't stand there. Like, some of them's going to start working towards the door. Yeah, the uh -huh. person was, I never thought of that. And the, the person pointed okay. it out to me. I said, that's good. So, I mean, one thing I was thinking about is that, um, like, with angled parking, like, I think about Look Park, for example, like the driveway, the path around Look Park, that they use front end angled parking. And, um, and also right downtown, and there's a lot of kids there, of course. Um, and then also downtown Northampton uses front end angled parking. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, I, I mean, I was curious and I didn't have a chance to look into it more about like, does Look Park have issues with people? Um, I mean, we could leave that part uh, well, ambiguous. I, I, in yeah. our recommendations, we could leave yeah. it a little ambiguous and just say mm -hmm. that we recommend angled parking as a way to make the parking only on one side of the street and also add sufficient mm -hmm. spaces. But I would actually second um, Guilford's point because with my kids, I have had that issue in the past mm. uh, where you, you know, you're opening the door, you're putting them down and you're trying to get something out or what, whatever you need to do to, you know, to hang out in the doorway. And they, they, their only place is towards the main road. So, yeah, it okay. is a much better thing. But then you've got to balance it with, you know, like I was pointing out, you're backing into a space that you don't necessarily know, to your point, Tracy. You know, people aren't really looking back properly. If that, it, you know, a kid could just run into there and then, then you've mm. got a little bit of a sandwich going on. So... But also... Yeah. Also think about strollers and things too. Right. Yeah. 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 It's easier to get out of that stuff. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So Guilford, do you think that in terms of um, like the number of like, do you, would, do you see problems if the parking is removed on that, the west side of North Pleasant Street and is substituted like with angled parking? No, you'll, you'll get actually get more spaces if you get rid of the west side parking and you angle the entire length. Okay, that's what because, we were wondering. Yeah. Yeah, because the driveways, and if you, and especially between McClellan and Triangle, if you put the sidewalk in the road, you, you'll have the whole length can be back end spaces or front end spaces. Okay. An, another I mother just a, another funny note another mother had just got back from spending the last two she actually she's a grandmother she spent the last two months in hawaii in honolulu and um they don't have angle in parking it's all back end parking yeah <laughs> well it's back in angled parking is that what you're back saying in angle parking oh so um so i think that so um it sounds like that's something there's a lot of reasons to do that per um, for the reasons that we've mentioned, and Guilford, what what I heard you say, and I'm, so I'm just repairing it back to make sure I understood, is that that if you do angled parking the whole length of it, then and we just get rid of it on the other side, that we've actually added more spaces than under the parking parallel parking on both sides of the street. Yeah. And yes. we've also and we've also eliminated the conflicts. So I mean that seems like mm -hmm. a win win. To Perfect. Me. Except um, you know. The only drawback, right, is and potentially is is the loss of that green space right now, and um, on the other side. Um, but I think that if traffic is going to explode, it will feel as safe walking on the, the sidewalk on the other side of the. Yeah, the non sidewalk is still right. going to be grade separated, right? So there will still be. I mean, there'll either be the asphalt curb or the granite curb. So, so yeah. there won't be, yeah. No, I don't know if we all, are we talking about the sidewalk on the west side? Yes. Then getting rid of the green space there. Mm -hmm. That's what Guilford was suggesting that right. we need to do that, which, you know, currently, like I said, there are two uses of that, as far as I can tell right now, that green space. Uh -huh. One is pizza boxes. That's and, uh, and, you know, beer cans. The other is dog waste which you know I mean dogs like to poop on that part too which people clean it up but I'm just saying that's one other thing that you know happens on that green space right now so I mean so the other thing is visually on that side of the street like almost all of those properties have green space like in front of Behind those other no but yes. they have mm -hmm. but in front of the uh, residential the buildings setbacks, there's like so, yeah, yeah they're setback that's what I meant so like visually yeah um, it would still be green yeah. Yes. Guilford? 
So I, I was reminded by the tree warden that he would probably not plant trees, even though we show trees in this picture, he would probably oh, right. not he would not plant trees in that green space because there's a gas line in that green space. Uh, and he okay. thinks that's what killed most of the trees that were there. And also wouldn't that impact the sidewalk and things? It doesn't seem like so great to have them adjacent to the sidewalk. In the trees, well, yeah. In that little. Great. They, yeah, but we wouldn't, he wouldn't want to plant them there because he'd be afraid of the, okay. the gas main killing them. And Got it. All right, well, if, so we, if we stop the gas main from leaking, it shouldn't be a problem, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so, so, we're, so we agree so the so the going back to the decision points right so the first question was should uh north pleasant street be one way from mcclellan to triangle and so we're agreeing yes yes and right. i don't know i mean do we and then the question is so one of the counselors did ask about whether it should be southbound and not northbound um i don't i mean it seems that most of the traffic would be coming from the town center so it makes sense for it to be northbound is there is there any other reasons we see for it i mean is there any reason we see for it to be southbound Guilford, well Guilford. Oh, well, the reason it's northbound is so that as you drive as you leave if you get up can you see my cursor no wait, no no nope, i can't see it either hold on all right as you leave, and if you're going northbound and you want to turn left, but the traffic's too heavy for left, you can make a right turn, go through the roundabout, change direction, go left. Um, okay. If you're actually trying to do it the other way and you're coming from Triangle Street to make a left turn into here, which would be the only way to enter, you have to wait for all this traffic to change. There's no easy way to make this left turn. Um, so that's why we chose northbound was that if you, if it was busy, you can make the right turn, mm. go through the roundabout to change direction. There is no easy way to do that on Triangle Street. You would just have to sit there and wait until someone yeah. lets you turn left. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. And so, so I, I agree with Tracy that I think if you're coming from downtown, you would be naturally going north. I think if you change it to southbound, that would encourage more traffic to take a shortcut from UMass over yep. to, uh, to East Pleasant Street. Well, I would think it would encourage shortcuts. Um, right. And yes, I can see people leaving campus and just like cutting that way. Right. I mean, it, I, it I, I, I drive that way <laughs> myself. But. Yeah, it, it does now. I mean, people take shortcuts now. So. Right, of course. So um, the, the, one, the one way uh, northbound makes good sense. Yeah. The angled parking makes good sense because we're actually adding spaces and people right always want that. so so in one question that came up at the council too i thought it was on the discussion points i don't see it here um is that people were asking uh the tso was asking about if it's northbound like if there should be a no left turn sign on the northbound end um so that people i mean um, so no, the people who can't turn left to go to UMass. I don't think so. <laughs> so, I mean, I would say that, I mean, to Guilford's point, like, right, there are certain times of the day when I'm sure it's hard to turn left there uh -huh. and like peak UMass times. But then just like I was talking about just the traffic in this area in general, there's also a lot of times when there's not that much traffic, you know, like on the weekends and when the students aren't there and things like that, like right now. And I think it would be really inconvenient. And I, I've, died, I've tried this a couple of times just to see what it looks like to have to like, if you wanted to go left at the north end to have to like go around the roundabout and come back. It, it's not a far distance, but it just seems super inconvenient. Like particularly when there's times of day when there's no other traffic. So you're like, why am I stuck doing this? Um, so I, I think that if there was gonna be a left turn there that it could, it could be, I mean, it could be limited to certain hours, but then that gets really complicated too. No, yeah, we've got so. enough space for a left turn, making it one way, you've got enough space for a left turn lane and a right turn lane. And if people figure out that they're sitting there for long enough, they'll go right and go around the roundabout and back again. As, as someone who regularly takes that journey, if I do on my, in my car, I, there's never, you wait maybe with one person. It's never about. It's never. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's Good. never. 
have to. I mean, and I go, if I were taking my car, I would go on, you know, at peak times. And, the, not- and, and there were some members of the public to, who were talking about um, the, oh, sorry, back to the southbound thing, but like that trucks from UMass like cut through <laughs> now. So they can't do that if we're all northbound. So we agree that it's I think, northbound. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think okay. one way going northbound is will work and it will be right. fine. I think it will also be fine with people from the community that is directly yeah. affected by okay. this. All right. So we, I think we agree on that. Um, yes. And then, and so, I mean, I don't really care about the green, the grass belt on the West side. I take it or leave it. It doesn't add much, but I think if we want to add additional things to the road and Eve had suggested the bike lanes and so on, like, if you take it out, you have some of that um, ability to add those things later. But I think Guilford said we kind of need to get rid of that if we do, if there is an angled parking. Yeah. Oh yeah, we would need to get rid of it. But we also, but Guilford also told us if we have angled parking all the way along that we've created the same number of spaces. Yeah. Or no, more spaces. So I so think it's no really a win-win. You right, know, yeah. no, of course. I'm, come up with a new idea that, you know, that, um, that, that checks off many then, boxes. Yeah, and then in terms of the angled parking um, for the disabled community, like handicap placards, I think that if we're going to have angled parking all the way along, that there's a lot of flexibility in where the handicap parking could be situated, right? It could be in any of those angled parking spaces. So, so I might suggest that we do two, th- we do, we do angled parking before the one-way part and then because that might be fle- more flexible for certain mm-hmm. people. And then angled parking at the beginning of the one-way part, you know, on either, essentially yeah. on either mm-hmm. side of McLeod. Well, can, we, can we put that to the disabled committee? And I right. think they, yeah. they, yeah. we yeah. have a couple of proposals here. No, absolutely. I think um, it would be nice to have closer <laughs> access for, dis- you know, a few disabled That's spots what, near, yeah. nearer the park. But at the same time, if we provide you know, a an asphalt park walkway from dedicated spots that are on that two-way side, what right. is the drawback? I mean, and I would hope that they would be able to tell us, you know, we, we only like to, you know, we, we're hoping it's within so many feet and all this sort of stuff. That, but I think if we can provide some options and get their feedback, then we can kind of uh, tailor things. Yeah. yeah. So but the, you, you just, also need to think that folks who have disability stickers don't always need adaptive, highly adapted vehicles. They don't need very them. true. Of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, could, thinking of my thinking of my late father, I mean, all the adaptation that he needed was inside the vehicle. But having an ease ease of access and having a crosswalk or having mm-hmm. a, a path to travel on made it much easier for him to yeah. So, I'm, I mean, so I, I think that, so the Disability Access Advisory Committee was also sent the decision points from the TSO and they are meeting next week and they will be discussing the project. So, I mean, I think sure. it makes sense to defer to them on their needs. I was under the same impression as Marcus that to have, you know, for highly adapted vehicle parking, like angled parking all the way on the south end of the park seems pretty far from the playground. Like, I think it should just be at the, I mean, we could even just note in our recommendations that it should be like where it's convenient for the population. And and some uh-huh. people, it would be nice, I think, um, just, you know, because there are also children with significant disabilities mm-hmm. um, who might have highly adapted vehicles. Like if there was, with the angled parking, it can accommodate, like if you add some extra space, right? It can accommodate, um, like a wheelchair ramp or a lift or something and that that would just make the even the playground like much more accessible too right but if we 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 might need multiple places right so yes we know we have the park the the kids playground right but at that um southern end yeah there's plans you know you uh we were shown you know the farmer's market people are if if that ever comes about there will need to be access close right. to that too. So, well, yeah. So, so I think we should make a suggestion because we've thought about these things, and we can throw it over to the um, yeah. disability service, the disabilities um, uh, group, because I think having it on 
to me, the most sense is having it on both sides of, of the McClellan intersection where there's accessibility and um, to both kind of the kids, the park um, on the one newly created one way part mm -hmm. of adjacent to McClellan and that, that McClellan intersection mm -hmm. on the south end of the park, which will, you know, I, those two places at least seem to be the places where mm -hmm. there will be the most um, activity and things that both adults and children will be needing. Definitely. So can we, I think, I know. Make a suggestion, just like, here's our idea. And then yes. they can tell us right. what they need. Yeah, because they, they won't think, it, they won't understand. I mean, they won't not, not, not understand. They won't be aware of what we we're talking about in terms of the front end park, well, right. the, the angle parking north of McClellan um, right. and that sort sure. of thing. So if we can at least make them aware what, what our recommend thoughts on the recommendations are, they don't have to be our final recommendations. Well, now, they can improve their thinking. Yeah, I mean, Guilford, so like for your, for, in terms of what you need from the council, you know, to move forward and get this project like on the project list for next year and look for money and all those kind of factors, right? Like decisions about like this detail about, you know, where exactly there should be handicapped parking, like they, they don't need to be made. Like no. immediately, I mean, you would just like it just, and it seems that at this point that maybe even just like angle, there will be angle parking and there will be some spaces, you know, with handicap accessibility, including some with like adaptive vehicles or something. Yes, we actually push back on having angle or not angle parallel parking handicap parallel parking in town. So if you're saying it's angle angle in or back in the whole length of the road, we can put handicap spaces like two we can do pairs of handicap spaces all down the road if we want to, and it would be really it would work really well. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. So I'm now looking back at our um, at our um, our uh, decision points here. And um, it looks like, like informally, we have gone through um, several of that, including the roadway decision, should it be one way? And I think we've kind of come to that agreement. And in the um, south, northbound direction, sorry, I always have to think about that. And um, the parking, we've kind of come to a, an agreement on that at least. Um, and should, and about the permit parking. So the next, do you guys, sorry, should I show this list again? Well, no, yeah, so I think I, do people have the list still? If you want to pull it up, I, I that's have, great. I have, a, I have the list okay. in front of me. I mean, so there's a couple things with the decision points um, in terms of the parking. It says, should 25 on street parallel parking spaces be added? So one, I mean, I even told um, some of the people on the TSO that it seemed kind of, weird to have as a decision point should there be 25 of them i mean i really leave that to like the design and mm -hmm. <laughs> and so on like it should be calculated as what makes sense um and that the question about the permit versus not permit i almost i mean i do i think we can say you know that you know that you live in the area kim and and that it doesn't we don't see like who is being served by the permit parking on this street and that if if all the parking is um, metered parking, then it's accessible to the public. So I think that that's something that you know in the town's revisiting of the permit pr permit parking program, and where permit parking is allowed, that that should be reviewed. I don't. I I personally think that we could just say that that's what we recommend. That we're not making that decision. Yeah. No. In the town. It's not, yeah. It's not the decision. No. Of course. Yeah. Well, so. There will be few things that will be frustrating to people if they show up to use the park and find that permit parking is assumed right, like, exactly. all those pieces. So I, I, I would, yeah, it, it's okay to say that uh, the town's restudying permit parking and that should drive it. But I think the suggestion should be made that this is a park designed to be accessible to people yeah. all through the day. Yeah, I agree with Bernie. I, I think it should not be permanent parking. If there would be any permanent parking, if there could be parking created along East Pleasant Street, along part of that section of the park, which also That's would slow point. down traffic on East Pleasant Street, too. That's a very good point, actually. But, and I, like I mean, the, the other thing is just who, like, if the per permit parking continues to be there, I mean, yes, I think you're right, Bernie, that if people come to the park and the spaces are taken and then there's all these free permit spaces, that's not great, but then also who, 
who is parking in the permit parking spaces? <laughs> you know, I mean, I support mm -hmm. getting rid of permit parking there. I don't think that the residents need it. I mean, maybe some of the people in some of the apartments or maybe students who are commuting who want to park there. Um, it doesn't seem necessary. I think, you know, we can defer to the town who's looking at that, but just say from our point of view, it doesn't seem necessary. And it, mm -hmm. yeah. and there's some problems with it, so. Right. That's, that's fair. And it also, too, then we're also addressing the town's need for where the town is trying to create additional on street parking because we're maximizing the publicly available on street parking by removing the permitted spaces. Yeah. Right. So, exactly. Um, and Guilford, did you have something you needed, you wanted to add? So, we, we have in town started this thing where we have permit spaces that also have meters. So over by the Lord Jeff on Spring oh. Street, there's a section of there's a row of there's a row of parking which is metered and permitted hey. downtown permit. The the downtown permit is meant to be for people who work downtown, give them a place to park without having to park too far away, or trying to get them out of the spaces that are metered. So that's why it was downtown parking. Um, but we do have we have done downtown parking permit with meters recently. So that might be a, something if you want to say that's a possibility because. Okay. Could that I mean, be so done Guilford on East Pleasant Street? It, it could be. I mean, we have parking on East Pleasant Street now um, on the side next to the um, businesses. But if you wanted to move it to the other side, you'd have more spaces and you can make it, this, you can make it like that as well. Could it be on both sides? It's it's a little tight for both sides. We would actually probably lose the um, bike lane if we did that. Yeah, we I, I think it should be the one side. But I guess that's an interesting thing, Guilford. We could we could you know say that that's a consideration. I mean, one thing is I one thing would be how is the permit parking program going to be structured in the future? Like currently, right? It's only nine to five p.m. September through May. Monday through Friday. And so, so for example, it isn't at night, right? You don't need a permit. It isn't on the weekends. It isn't the whole summer when the UMass students are gone. Um, and so, I mean, in terms of all the kind of peak times that the public would be using those spaces, <laughs> it seems that they, it there wouldn't be a huge conflict with the permit parking program. Because people aren't going to be coming there, you know, during the day when their kids are in school and that kind of thing. So, I mean, we could we could mention that. I think it's a little complicated for people if it's both. But I mean, if the town wants to continue to have permit parking there, that could be an option, maybe. Well, how many how many permit parking spaces are there now? Does anybody know? Gilford, do you know? He's counting. I 20. Count. 20. Oh, 20 many? on this street though, right? Okay. On the street. But well, there, there uh, also are, are metered parking on that street. On the, the south meter... on the south end. Correct. Yeah. Well, how, how about if we would recommend that with the uh, the new parking on the North Pleasant Street, the, the head-in parking, if that's how it's going to be, that a certain percentage be kept as uh, permit, but depending on how many spaces there are altogether, you know, a certain percentage, not, not, not all of them, you know. And, you know, likely what we would suggest is that the ones closest to the university and furthest away from the interesting things in the park be those dual. Correct. That would, be, right. that would make sense. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think they can look at that and we can suggest it. So you're suggesting that the permit parking, they stay closest to the university, Kim, is that what you were yes. saying? Yes. Like where they are now, sort of? <laughs> um, well, they are, no, but- Oh, the, but they're going along. The whole yeah. length of the street. And, right. and I should should add, there is one complicated, there is one house that is owned by a person who lives in it on the north end of the park, and they have a very shallow driveway. And my guess is that they are actually use the permit parking in front of their house for I, I've seen cars parked there actually. Yeah. A yeah, lot. Yeah. yeah. And so 
maybe, you know, so, so that is the only, as far as I can tell, that's the only real residential parking. They don't have parking in the back like everybody else does. Okay. So, so that is one, you know, maybe so keep that maybe yeah. one, one reason to keep that permit parking at the north. The very north end. Yeah, that makes sense. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, I think that'd be fine. Yeah. I mean, there's only a certain capacity really at the kids' playground and thing right. anyway. So if we oh, make sure. everything, <clears throat> pardon me. And and honestly, yeah, the 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 metered parking that's at the south end of the park is highly under underutilized. I mean, I don't ever see it full ever, except maybe for events at the park. No, but people do park <laughs> at the metered parking on Halleck. That yeah. seems like that's pretty full. Yes. metered parking too. I mean, the other thing too is that if if there are permanent parking spaces that aren't getting used a lot, and then the public is parking there, say on the weekends or at night or during the summer when the permit parking isn't enforced, then they're not using the meters. So then the town isn't generating revenue. Yeah, that they could be generating. Not that, not that that's our focus, but just. Well, no, yeah. I mean, I was actually about to. Are we going to provide a special training spaces for the? Uh, for the driving school that's there. <laughs> they have certain driving spaces out there marked up ready. That's true. Well, but those are those are those are um meter that's meter parking. I mean well they need to start actually learning how to use the meter. They'll have to figure out something else. <laughs> they'll have to. I've actually so I've actually worked closely with the driving school before on um driving studies, both the teen drivers and older drivers and and we've used their cars in our UMass studies. Um I did actually contact the driving school owner who I know pretty well just to ask like if they had any opinion, but I haven't, I never heard back from them, but I'm you actually, I'm up. officially a driving instructor myself. So, well, yeah, to, to they, fully they go over to Halleck street. Oh yeah. Right. And they also, they use that whole, they use North Pleasant Street and McClellan for actually the state driving tests, like when the RMV examiners come and they get their the driving that's students, a, get their not licenses. Our, it, it's, no, it's not our thing. I just have to worry about that. <laughs> I mean, that's outside. I mean, uh, yeah, of course. Um, so, so would we, um, sh would someone like to kind of formulate a, um, uh, uh, an, uh, to put something forward for us to vote on. Sure. We can amend it if someone <clears throat> wants to I, make a motion. May, on... may I just ask, I'm sorry, Kim, may I just ask one question? Did we resolve about the sidewalk? Are we going yeah, to- Yeah, I don't, yeah, we need to talk a little more about the sidewalk. I'm happy to write something up, like I've taken notes and I started, sort of drafted a memo. Um, well, I think what we should do is actually have motions for each of the questions. That's what I was going to say yeah. too. But um, can we talk? But we're pretty much in unanimous agreement, I think, for each of the elements. Except for I, I want to go back to this question about: Do we need a sidewalk all along the west side of so, the park? So just in in interest of time, because we okay. now have we have fifteen more minutes, Tracy. So and I think it would be excellent if we could vote on a few things. And yes, of course, we still have the other, the sidewalk issue to, to deal with, and that yes. may impact our other votes. But in the interest of, of moving things forward and yes. making sure we get something accomplished, um, you know, get some voting done on, okay. on topics that I feel like we've addressed pretty thoroughly. Um, how about if we make some motions? And I agree with whomever said this, that we should maybe just vote on each component separately. I, I think that's a good idea and it makes it clearer to the TSO and the council like how we yeah. felt about the different parts. Um, so I here's a draft a draft motion. Um, uh, we recommend, is that how you do a motion? Anyway, we recommend changing North Pleasant Street from McClellan to Triangle Street to a one-way street going northbound if traffic calming measures are added to slow down traffic. Second. Um, any other discussion, amendments? Nope. Um, okay, so all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those, um, I think that was unanimous. So. Yes. Okay, so that's a five zero vote. 
five to zero votes on in favor um, in favor in favor right. of that okay and and just relatedly it wasn't on a decision point but just to be clear so we can say uh i don't know if there's things we don't recommend we still need to vote on them but we say we we don't support creating a left turn restriction at triangle street we is would that, make a motion to do that but that is we have that, to amend the original one if you wanted to add that to it no i mean i'm saying but we're gonna i thought we were voting on each of the parts separate yes yes so i would say but wait is that i don't see that as a as it a, wasn't a decision I don't know why it wasn't on there because I know at least half of the TSO committee like okay, brought it up. That's fine. So, let's, let's do that. I think we, we can just you, clarify. You can just, it. You, we can just mention it. I mean, there's, yeah. you know, we've got really good consensus on these points. Yeah, I think so. So, so I think if you just wanted to say, as a parent, parenthetically, in we whatever gets sent to the TSO, yes, we're not, we're we we don't see the need for a left turn only at the end of absolutely. Uh, okay. okay, so we can say that. We'll just say that. Sure. Yes. Without need for a left turn lane. Yeah. Okay. Left turn only lane. Okay, great. And um, okay. We that and I good. feel like we 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 also kind of implicitly um, said if so. So they're saying it should it be northbound. If so, should safety features be added such as raised crosswalks? And that we included that in our yes. In yes, our, we did. Okay. Right. Great. So and I can put in the narrative just that one that Guilford had suggested could be added. We're, we're, we're leaving some of this open. You know, we said traffic no, calming measures. I, I, of do, course. Do we, yeah. want to, do we want to do, don't, we don't want to make this mistake of being too prescriptive here. No, because but I think that one thing is we can take votes on the general motion, sure. like traffic calming measures. And then just in our narrative, we can say, you know, because we've talked about with Guilford about adding an additional crosswalk mm -hmm. as an example, but we're not taking a vote on those elements no. that's right We're just yes. that's just our narrative to accompany our vote that's correct okay and, um as far as the second um decision point about parking would someone like to suggest to make uh to put into words what our next um vote will say? yeah can i i would suggest that we uh move the the tac recommends that the town move to put angled parking on the east side of North Pleasant Street only. Or uh, across the whole length of East of North Pleasant Street. Did I say East Pleasant? Pleasant. Yeah, yeah, North Pleasant. Right. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I yes, let me restate that for the record. Um, we move that the town place angled parking along the east side of North Pleasant Street along the length where possible. Um, and do we want to say anything just as an amendment to that um, as far as metered parking or do we want to not say that? I, I think that shouldn't be in the original motion okay, yeah. and I but I think we could add also add something to the motion that says we recommend the town place angled parking along the east side of North Pleasant Street um, we, I guess we could even say like from McClellan to Triangle, or we could even say from Halleck to Halleck to Triangle. Yeah. To try, mm -hmm. Um, and remove the parallel parking spaces on the east side. I mean, the west side Ooh, of North. That's a very that, that's point. that's uh, implicit in the fact that we say only, right? Oh, right. Yes. Well, I didn't hear the only. Oh, but sorry. Just, yeah, yeah, but yeah. why don't we just make it also like clear that we want that yeah. other parking lot? Okay. Line. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so we can, yeah, we can motion then that the town move to um, uh, develop angled parking along only along the east side of North Pleasant Street from Hallett to Triangle, where possible. Yeah. And that no parking be available on the west side of North Pleasant Street. Okay, all the that that motion sounds brilliant to me. All those in favor. We have to do a second. Oh, I'll, sorry. I'll second I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Second Three seconds. Seconded. Yeah. All those. Aye. Sorry. Any more discussion, Bruce? Yes. Sorry. No, I was going to say aye. <laughs> oh, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. aye.
again another um five zero vote yeah. unanimous vote okay i'm not sure i'm not sure i have the language like exactly yeah let me um I'll, uh, but yeah. here i'll right. just here's what i wrote the attack recommends that the town place angled parking along the east side of north pleasant street from Halleck to triangle street um where possible, where possible yeah well i or where as appropriate or so as I mean, appropriate yeah as appropriate yeah, is much better because yeah. because i want it to be safe as well mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and remove the parallel parking on the west side of north pleasant street yep or, or, sorry on this section of west pleasant street um, yeah and and i thought we might also um move on uh the creation of new um handicap accessible parking um on that street should we wait until we talk to the, the, the I, yeah. I thought we just might move on the creation of new yes handicap. Uh, okay, yeah, that sounds well, good. So so we could Not say good. the TAC recommends that some of the new angled parking spaces be dedicated for handicap parking and that said handicap parking be placed as appropriate you know, and determined with consultation with the DAC. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, say in consultation. Right. I so mm -hmm. I think we should vote. I think that would be an appropriate um, motion to be seconded. Second. All those in favor of this vote say aye. 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 Great. And another five to zero vote. OK, so I think we've done most of it. <laughs> And we still have nine minutes, so. So, and the other thing too is that the, so what's happening is that TSO wants to receive input, written input from the TAC, the DAC, the Street Tree, the Public Shade Tree Committee. I don't know if there's any other committees. And then they ask that all that um, be submitted to them by, I think by like September 20th or 21st. And that then they would consider that at their TSO meeting on the 23rd, and they would then set a public hearing because it's involving parking. The council needs to have a public hearing, and that they would then set a public hearing for October. Okay. Um, but I think I really like the idea, particularly we have other projects coming up too. And so I like the idea of getting a lot of this like off yeah. our plate. Mm -hmm. uh, Gilford? You want to make a, a motion about removing the green space on the west yes. side? Oh, yes. Yep. I was just thinking about that. Yes. Yeah. And um, can I and, can I make that motion? Oh. I would like to make the motion move that the town remove the green space on the west side of North Pleasant Street between Halleck and Triangle Street uh, to enable the parking as proposed. And then also, I guess, to do we want to say something about bike lanes or something? No, I think that's kind of. Well, or, or maybe we could have a separate motion. Yeah, yeah I think um, we need I mean, to I like the separate. idea of having, I don't think it's a core part of this and that's not a decision point. That's not something TSO thought about, but yes, Guilford. You, you didn't vote about the sidewalk, did you? Putting the sidewalk in the No, way? not yet. Not no. yet. Yeah. Okay, so we're uh, the motion is to remove the green space on. Yeah, the uh, actually, and I, can I refine the motion because it's the green space between the sidewalk on the west side of North Pleasant Street and North Pleasant Street. Yeah. Uh, just to make sure that we're clear that it's, we're not taking anybody's uh, setback. All right. Oh, right. So that's uh, to that is to create um, to create space for the intended parking plan. Could you say intended parking plan and possibly a bike lane? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'd like to have and bike possibly lane a bike lane. lane. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You know, and, yeah, that's and, fine. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We'll give it that. Go. I'll second that. Second, Bruce. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Again, another unanimous. <laughs> if only we were running the US Congress. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And oh, well, then we uh, want to talk about the, the the motion for the crosswalk, not the crosswalk, correct. sorry, the, the um, bike footpath. sidewalk. Yeah. Oh, side lane, sidewalk. But I feel like that's a, a larger, a bigger thing. issue. Yeah. yeah. And we can also, I guess, to so one question I had for DAC that I hope they'll bring up at their next meeting is um, 
the question about accessibility and how important the sidewalks are. I mean, so as I had indicated previously, like I didn't, I, I still don't fully support the idea of having a side and a sidewalk on both sides of North Pleasant Street on that section. I don't think it's necessary. I would prefer to have, it's a lot of paved area that then has to be maintained. And I'd prefer to have paths like through the park, the dotted lines and just focus those and then have sidewalks where needed, perhaps like as we were talking about on the South end. Um, it is it is proposed on the plans, right? It is that dotted line. Can I, yeah, can the, I, the, can I, the, can I just say something right. though? Yes. If you recall along Main Street, uh, along Sweetser Park, there used to be parking meters and then there was supposed to be grass and then the sidewalk and people would get out of their cars and they would keep walking across that grass and Guilford would be well aware of this because they corrected it a few years ago. It all became a sea of mud. And then, then the sidewalk was added and now that's whole problem has been resolved. Mm -hmm. Wait, but Kendrick Park doesn't have a sidewalk on one side. They have it on the main yeah, street. But what side, we're saying is we're putting the, parking okay. in. Yeah, so we're gonna have people yeah. going from the, the road onto the park. Yeah. But so I guess in order to, to, to stop the sidewalk they're gonna have a lot of mud. Yeah. I guess the thing is, I guess it depends the extent to which people are parking there. So in the case of Sweetster Park, like it's right next to Ann Will and anything, so it's got a lot of people parking from there but i think about the common like the main common downtown and that how a lot of the parallel parking spaces that are there currently right they don't have sidewalks next to them like people park you, their cars and yeah we keep in mind though the, the common isn't used nearly as much as this park is intended yeah. to be used. and i would i would look to somewhere like groff park right the amount of traffic that the um, play area at Groff Park generates. Mm -hmm. And the parking there is full pretty much all of the time. And the majority of people are at the playground. So I think anything that we put on the, north mm -hmm. uh, on the west side of North Pleasant will get used. Mm -hmm. And that will be but, their focus, at guess, least for the time being, yeah. But Marcus, to your example of Groff Park, right? So Groff Park doesn't have sidewalks like adjacent. No, it doesn't. Parking. But I'm saying, but in terms of I the just... amount of parking, right? The use of the parking, they have spaces in the way. Uh, Guilford, sorry. Man, sidewalks are coming to Groff Park. They oh, are really? uh, awesome. Where are the sidewalks coming to Groff Park? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the first the first leg is to go from the intersection of West Street up to Groff Park entrance, and then once we get there, the next part of the project is to put a sidewalk that goes all the way back to the concession stand and tie into the sidewalk at the park. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess, so. I guess one question that I have is just if it's laid out with angled parking, and then we also want to have bike lanes and things, and I. I I, I mean, I would put a higher priority on designating that, that than, than pushing the sidewalk. I mean, than having a sidewalk that, I mean, we do, if there is gonna be a sidewalk because of concerns with the trees, it sounds like the sidewalk would need to be where the road currently is. Right, that's the so, point. That's the whole point of taking the, the green space on the right, other no, side of the way. Course. But the, but, but the other reason we're taking away the green space on the other side is also because we also wanna have like bike lanes and other right, you know, but that wouldn't be have. possible. I, well, so it, I, I would suggest that that the whole the whole we we've been speaking about the things like you know pedestrian and child safety getting out of cars. If we're getting because you know we talked about whether we want to back in or front in because you want to get from the street mm. to where you're going as quickly as you can. If there is no path there then where are you going? You're going back into the street to walk along the street to go to where you need to be. Because if you, the whole point is the trees, but also the topography of that region there, it's, you know, fairly steep banked in some places, the way we wouldn't be able to just park and walk onto the, onto the park straight away. So you're pushing people back out onto the road to get, you know, to wherever they need to be, not, instead of not being able to access a place that's away from traffic straight away yeah I, I agree and i just think it just makes so much sense to have a sidewalk at the north end of the park it, it just 
it's the perimeter. And, uh, you're starting on the west end of the park? Well, right, but they're up, up at the North Pleasant Street is what I'm oh. uh, But to have a sidewalk there to access the different points in the park, the different pathways. So do I, we, I, I mean, do we think the sidewalk needs to be like all the way along the whole length of that's North Pleasant that's... Street on the west side? I mean, on I, the east side? I would side say of the... so, again, because it's, it, because you have parking. Well, I would put it anywhere where there is parking. Um, so I would like to remind us that we just have a few minutes left. Yes. Okay. Make decisions about our next, um, the dates of our next meetings. Maybe we can talk about, I guess. So we didn't vote on that. And that's like the one remaining main element. Right. So that's, that's fine. But that's I good. <laughs> actually. And, so. and I think, I think it would still behoove us all to do a walk, um, through, um, once the students are back in that area. So just to really not- Can we set up a date now so for that maybe? I, I mean, I do have a question about maybe could we each visit it because we have this other site. Okay. If we're talking about another site visit too on like North Pleasant through campus. Yeah. Um, I would put it as a lower priority for us to do a site visit here if people, like you live in the neighborhood, Kim, I walk that neighborhood all the time. Maybe if um, members feel like doing so they could walk through it and uh -huh. particularly when the students are there and just look at what it's like but I don't, I'm not sure we need to use like an official meeting time to do that site visit. I'm fine right. with that because I really feel confident with what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I've been driving and, through there. Yeah, I've been thinking about it a lot too so I think yeah. Um, but but on the agenda we were okay. talking, because we don't have our 916 meeting I'm not sure what the dates are of our um I guess 916 would have been. So we one. typically would meet on the first and the third, right? So we don't have any other meetings scheduled for August, right? which I don't think we need any. Oh. Um, and we can, I mean, if the committee feels comfortable, I mean, I will write it up, but I can also share um, with the, uh, you know, TSO or the, you know, that we voted on like all of these key elements already or something. Um, so what would our first meeting be? Because it seems like that's going to be the key one so that we can get. So I think if we, we would, it, hopefully we can meet on the second, if that's not too crazy for people. Okay, great. Uh, that, September? Or, yeah. September 2nd. Um, hang on a second, sorry. Children well, are no, back. I, yeah. Sorry. And UMass is back and everybody's back. <laughs> yeah, and I'm good. I'm good then. Yeah. Okay. Tag. Yeah. And then we can't meet on the third. I mean, I suggest we don't, I mean, there's conflicts with Yom Kippur on the 16th. Yep. So the TSO, they wanted the recommendations by their meeting on the 23rd. But I mean, after the second, you know, we could, if we take some final votes and people review the memo, mm -hmm. which I can circulate, then we, we probably don't need to I mean, we could have a makeup meeting on the ninth, or we could just skip it, but or maybe leave it open in case. Maybe we feel play like it by ear. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so at least we have the meeting on the second, and yes. we have pretty clear uh, a, a view of what our agenda is going to be. So that's yeah. Perfect. Yes. And then we'll decide on. That and one. The, and so the meeting on the second, I think we could cover this, which hopefully wouldn't take us too long since we've right. already talked about it and we're agreement. And then maybe we could also preview the. The other project if Guilford wants to kind of run through that mm -hmm. or maybe or and maybe we could have like an optional site visit maybe on the 9th or something if well, I was going to say we do want to meet on the 23rd and do that as a walk as the walking tour we could do it we could do it on the 23rd sure okay. um 23rd hang on a second sorry of um, September or August um September. uh the uh, uh September why I mean we could meet sorry that's not a typical meeting week, but yeah, we could just choose to do like a site visit that week. Maybe we'll have some more members by then. Okay. I cannot do a site visit. Well, maybe it depends what time. Same time. Five um, o'clock. I, I would be late, but I would be there. Okay. All right, maybe I'm we could do in it. So, so the TSO is discussing the project that day um mm -hmm. so i would like to appear at the tso meeting just to speak to our recommendations mm -hmm. um, but yeah. i could do a short site visit their their meetings 
currently are being scheduled for 6 30 which is like oh. right after our meeting oh yeah that's fine yeah. so but if we did like a shorter site visit sure um so mm -hmm. okay, okay. So 5 p.m ish to six mm -hmm. five to six site visit potentially yeah okay. okay right um and it's um it's 6 34. Right. i have dinner uh, and well, that so, sounds great can i just ask uh, guilford one question uh guilford the I am concerned with the amount of time it is taking to resurface the roads up in North Amherst because I believe that it's you know proving difficult for people on bicycles to avoid people in cars avoiding raised manhole covers. Are we kind of treating the resurfacing in Amherst like they do metal plates in Atlanta and just like kind of forgetting about things, or is there like a plan for when we would actually get to the end of it? Yeah, we expect to see them either the last week of August or the first week of September. Okay. They're just they're just trying to catch up from all the rain in July, so yeah. they're behind schedule. Because I didn't know. It seems that we started a lot of things instead of like starting something, finishing something, starting something, finishing something. So we've had a lot of time with, you know, objects in the road that I would hope we could avoid. But well, yeah. maybe I'll not, just go ahead, go for it. Sorry, we're 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 not there only contract for the year yeah so that's what i figured yeah so as the rain comes in i mean actually i really don't expect to see them until after september because they're still trying to wrap up umass work which all of a sudden umass becomes a priority mm -hmm. in august so i mean just is there a way in the future that we can i'm sure this is not the first time this has happened but you know we can work to avoid this difference in time or it's a money issue if you tell yeah. them they'll charge you the money to, if you want to do it that way, they'll charge you a higher price to make sure they get the time to do it is how mm -hmm. it works out. So okay. we choose to just, we have a month or two, if we have a month or two. Mm -hmm. um, and for the next meeting, I I mean, I won't bring it in here because I know Kim wants to go to dinner. Um, and, but some, maybe we could have updates on some of the other projects like Pomeroy and um I'd also be interested in just, it hasn't ever come to the TAC, but this idea about with the crosswalks on Triangle Street and uh, East Pleasant Street and the rapid rectangular flashing beacon that planning just wants to have like one on the cross anyway, but maybe we could talk to some of those items. Next time. Yeah. At the, on the, and if there's other, and, and I do hear, I do get emails sometimes from people who live off of East Pleasant Street about like what's ever happened with that. Um, so is it ever going to make it back like up the queue? <laughs> so, I mean, it wasn't, there was money set aside for that, right? I guess. There was, I mean, there's money set aside for a lot of things. There's oh, okay. a lot of projects. I mean, there's a lot of projects out there moving. I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All uh, right. Sorry, All guys. Right. One more thing. I was wondering on the back end parking in um, on I guess is it East Pleasant, North Pleasant in town. Is there a way to improve the signage so that they could, people can understand that it is back in? I mean, even it, though it's signed everywhere except it says back in. It does it say right back there. in, but at two, but only technically at two of the spots. Right, the no, spot, but then the, it, and it also has the signage to show how to get into the back from the spaces. south, right? If you're but the only, north. I mean, my perception of why some people park front in there is because they're coming from southbound traffic yeah. and there's yeah. not enough traffic downtown. I mean, there's, I mean, it's but, easy for them just to like swoop across because everybody else because, would be if, angled at that. If angle. you notice, the people that are parking nose in do not park at the two spots that are marked as back in parking because those are the technically the two spots that are marked. If I got a ticket there for that, I would be pointing to the fact that the part, the signage only points to two spots oh, being marked. And I so actually, I think we need like just just with just they just well, need little so arrows. Is, is, at this, the is, the, is, is this an item? Um, no, it's not, it's not anticipated by the oh, yeah. 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 seriously. We're, we're, we could talk we could talk about it at a different We're drifting meeting. a little bit. We're drifting. <laughs> okay, why don't we wrap up and we can have some of these items next yeah. time? Chris. I can't see you anymore, but I'll move to adjourn. All right. I second. Bye. All right. See you all. Thank you. All right. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, Kim. Bye. All right. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Thanks, Gilford.